Have you ever wondered what a map of the Linux kernel would look like? Well, look no further because there's an open source project for it and you can explore it yourself. I'll make sure to post a link in the description below so you can check it out as well. This is from makelinux.net and it is an open source project that you can actually scroll across and scroll into and view the various different layers and interfaces that belong to the kernel. Now, honestly, it is a little fidgety when you're going across and in and out, but nonetheless, it is very powerful to use and I quite enjoy it because you can get an understanding of how all the internals coincide with each other and how those calls work together. But let's go through it just a little bit together so we understand how this works. I do wanna make a small shout out in this update video as we received an update from the original creator. In the last video, the first comment I saw here was as the daughter of the creator of the map, Constantine, I really appreciate the video, thank you so much. And I replied to them saying that was awesome. And then I actually got a reply from the creator. Savvy Nick, with pleasure, thank you for your wonderful review and your review motivated me to make an update to the map, which thanks again, Constantine, for making this available to all of us. The update is fantastic. I'm gonna show you a few cool things that you can do with this kernel map now that you couldn't before, but let's go through the various subsystems or what I like to call subsystems. First up here, we have different functionalities that are labeled, so human interfaces or how the user interacts with the system. We have system, processing, memory, storage, and networking. And what you'll typically hear is that the primary interfaces of the kernel are in this layer here. So going down, we'll call these layers and going over here, we'll call these functionalities. So we can think about it as your computer needs these things in order to operate. Again, you need to interact with memory, storage, networking, processing system, and the actual person using the computer. And that's why it's called user space interfaces, because this is what the user actually has access to. For example, if we zoomed in a little bit here, we'd see networking and we have various different functions inside the networking functionality and the user space layer, such as a socket call, connecting, accepting, binding, etc. And this socket access layer goes down to creating a socket, which is part of the address families here, which socket create in turn calls various different operations on the system. And for example, if this inet create was called, it goes down to call proto ops, which can go multiple ways and create an inet diagram operation or an inet stream operation and skips right through this section and goes down into protocols. And it keeps stepping down really all the way until you finally hit the actual device drivers which access the hardware. Yes, it's complicated, but that's why we have this kernel map and a fantastic one at that. Also, this is the fantastic part about Linux and why it's so great because you have access to all these layers. It's not a mystery, unlike Windows. The Windows kernel is a very big mystery. Not many people understand what's in it, how it works, what you can call. And I wanna take a moment to say a special thanks to all the people who help develop the Linux kernel, maintain it, make documentation, and contribute their time and effort into building this wonderful kernel for us, free and open source. And then also a special thanks to Constantine and the amount of time they put into building this. Now we can actually click on the various different functionalities and layers. If you wanna know more about the human interface layer, you can actually click on it and then you're gonna get more information about that human interface layer. This is fantastic because it talks about character devices so we can learn about what character devices are and how they're used, including the various different things that interact with the human interfaces. If you're unfamiliar with, let's say virtual memory, you can also click that and then we have even more information about the memory functionality in the virtual memory module. Very cool as Constantine has really updated this memory map to make it even more useful. And what's wild is not only can you click on the various different, what I'll call headings at this point, but you can also drive in deeper. Now we have access to the functions that are part of all of these. For example, if we went to logical memory and we wanna see what the kmalloc function does, we are pointed to the portion of the Linux kernel where kmalloc is defined, which is pretty awesome. A lot of work went into this and you can tell they really care about mapping this kernel. Also use these controls up in the top right corner. They can definitely help you if you sometimes accidentally click on something, it can get annoying, but these controls are fantastic. They've been reworked as well. So you can definitely go in and out of whatever interests you in the subsystems. You can navigate more fluidly this way. And with this awesome update, we have even a better understanding of how things are laid out in a sense and how everything has to interact together in order to talk to your devices or hardware below. 
And you can definitely imagine how hard it is and how much time and effort goes into building the kernel because the user space interfaces talk to the virtual ones, which talk to bridges, which talk to the logical units, the device control hardware interfaces, all just to access the actual physical hardware on your system. Now that's a lot of layers. And not only that, but it works opposite. If you have to have information come back, you have to talk back up the layers and back up the chain in order to get information back through user space to the actual user. For example, in the virtual layer, we have security, driver model threads, virtual memory, virtual file system, and address families, which this virtual layer here is just is a transport space really between the user space and some of the lower level features of the kernel. After that, we cross the bridge, which features more modules such as debugging, synchronization, memory mapping, page caching, swapping, network storage, and socket splicing. Sometimes you don't have to go over the bridges. Instead, you make it straight to the logical unit where functions actually get implemented through drivers or devices, which are both located in the device control and hardware interfaces. In the logical portion, we have high subsystems, system run, scheduler, logical memory, logical file systems and protocols. Device control grants us access to various things such as abstract devices and HID class drivers, generic hardware access, interrupts, core, page allocator, block devices and network interfaces. And finally, in the hardware interfaces, we have high peripheral device drivers, device access and bus drivers, CPU specific drivers, physical memory operation storage drivers, and finally network device drivers. And that leads into the hardware electronics as labeled here, which include user peripherals such as keyboard, cameras, mouse, graphics cards, so on and so forth. We also have access to IO, including things like the USB controller, PCI express bus, the CPU, of course, the registers, interrupt controller, memory, your RAM, DMA, MMU, storage controllers, such as SATA drives or NVMEs, and then finally the network controls, which include your Ethernet and Wi-Fi adapter, which you can tell here are all at the bottom. I'm really happy that I got in contact with the actual creator themselves. Again, a special thanks to Vika and Constantine for reaching out. Here's the actual project on GitHub if you want to check it out. It's the Linux kernel map under Make Linux Linux kernel map. There's also a second diagram that I want to get into. This is also a great one, not quite as detailed and not as updated, but it is called the Linux kernel diagram. This one is better if you don't necessarily care about the individual functions that are part of each layer or functionality that are given to us by the kernel. Instead, this clears things up a little bit and makes it a little easier to follow. Very similar concept here. We have rows and then columns, which are known as functions and layers. And this one's really cool too, because you can actually scroll and zoom in as well as click on some of these to figure out what functions are available, but they don't show up directly on the diagram. It's absolutely fantastic what open source brings us. Make sure to thank an open source developer today for all their hard work and time they put in to make our lives a little easier. And make sure to go down in the description below and bookmark this so you can use it in the future. If you have any questions, comments, make sure to post them in the comments section below. I'll be looking out for more updates as they come. And if you want to as well, make sure to subscribe below in order to get those updates as soon as I post them. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.